All right, welcome back to week four of our introduction to the game of sevens with uh, Christy Kirsch. So Christy, thanks again for being on, on our final segment here where today we're going to be exploring the strategy of sevens, hopefully in a very basic scope so I can understand what Christy's uh, saying and you guys can too. But uh, we're going to be discussing elements of attack, defense, uh, the importance of strike plays and breaking down a bit of film um, courtesy of Christy to see it all uh, in action. So Christy, thank you very much. And I'm excited to kind of go through some of this stuff with you. Yeah, um, let me just say it's probably gonna be pretty basic, um, but um, we'll get a general overview of the game, which will be good. Fantastic, basic works with me. Yeah. And the first slide here is a text. So we've got some principles here, Christy. Maybe if you don't mind running through what exactly these these sentences mean in a, in a bit of depth. Uh, yeah, so these are like, um, these are, as I said, pretty basic principles, but they're also principles that we use in and out every day. Um, so the first one, filling the pitch, um, this is just the idea of like using, you know, the width between attackers and manipulating the depth, whether you're, you know, flat across the pitch, whether you're holding a lot of space. Um, and just basically to, to put stress on the defense. So like the wider you are, the harder it is to cover everyone. So just filling the, filling the pitch so you can play sideline to sideline. And so that you're just putting the defense under like an initial set of stress just because they have to cover so much space. Um, and then with that is the next one, identifying and attacking gaps. Um, this is just kind of, you know, identifying where the space is going to be, if there's gaps in the defense, if there's dog legs, if, you know, so if, which, when I say dog leg, I mean, if some defenders are shooting and others are holding back, there's that space in behind them. So just identifying what that space is and then attacking that space, attacking that space at, at pace. And then, you know, if you're going to take contact, make sure you're taking out multiple defenders. So then you can kind of set up mismatches in the um in the next phase or um you know and always just looking for those 2v1 3v2 situations where you guys are on um you guys have an advantage and just identifying and attacking those um spaces and then supporting play is the other huge part of the, of all of rugby really it, you know it's part of maintaining possession but also you know also just maintaining those those offload options being there for a quick ruck um, just support in general is just, you know, making sure that the ball carrier always has options. Um, and that's just, you know, maintaining possession, starving the other team in the ball, all huge parts of attack. Nicely done. And I, I guess those are pretty similar to 15s in a way as well. But I, I imagine things such as filling the pitch with there only being seven defenders is so much more effective in sevens because if you can, as you said, apply initial stress on that D, um, it's going to pay off in dividends if you can stretch them and, and create those, those gaps. How important is patience and what's the trade-off? Like, is, is the trade-off that you could get caught behind, well behind the game line if you guys are going back and forth a few times and you get caught 10 metres behind? Is that the trade-off? Um, I think that's something that can definitely happen. And, you know, like if you guys are just, if you're just kind of sitting back and um, not really, you know, actually attacking the space, if you're just kind of maintaining the space, then yeah, you know, a good defense is going to shoot and find their opportunity to kind of, yeah, tackle you behind the game line. So there's an element of like being patient to find like the best space for the team, but there's also an, an element of just, of making sure that um, you're not just like sitting on your heels and not making anything happen. So. Nice. And, and then what's the, like, you know, the plan B or the plan Z? Um, like, if you guys are just completely stuck, is that right? Carry into contact, recycle the ball, secure that breakdown, and then what? Is it to get to an edge, or what? what is sort of typically a plan Z, if you will? Um, we do, I mean, we play the edges often because we do have really fast wingers, and we usually like our odds on the wing, but I would say, you know, uh, yeah, when we're under stress or when we're, we usually try to carry into contact, try to take out, you know, multiple defenders if we can, so that we do set up a mismatch somewhere. Um, and then just kind of, yeah. So I, I think, yeah, when we're under stress, it's just carrying into contact, reset, get our alignment right. And then kind of attack from there. Nice. And, and then finally kicking, is that a complete never? 
what do you grow? Not, so what's the, um, yeah. So it's not a never, and it's something that um, we've been adding to our game a little bit more. It's just something you see a lot less in sevens, I think, than you do in fifteens. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's part of our game we're, we're building, and you'll see other teams do it more often than we will. But um, it's definitely an option. It's just uh, you know, for someone like me, it's not ever something I'm reading. But you know, somebody like Lev is reading it and can see that space, and will put the ball in that space. And so it's something that. It's definitely an option. It's just not, not an option that we currently use all the time, I'd say. Cool. Well explained. And then I guess that leads quite nicely into strike plays. So what exactly, Christy, is a strike play? Yeah, so we talk about strike plays as part of the attack. You know, these are just, you know, plays that are off of, you know, lineouts, scrums, uh, tap penalties usually. Um, and, you know, they're just a little bit, they can be a little bit more pre-planned. You know, you can have a play off of a line out, you can have a play off of a scrum, just so you have a little bit more of a, a plan to try to maximize that, that first phase of attack off of that set piece. Um, but it's something that like, yeah, you have a play, you might have a play for the first phase, but you know, if, if you don't score off that first phase off that initial play, we're just going back into those basic principles. We're just, you know, we might, we might gain 30 meters, which is great for a strike play, but then after that, it's still, okay, we set the ruck, we got to fill the pitch. So it's just, these are just kind of um, a little bit more direct, a little bit more planned parts of attack, but still, you know, if they, if you don't score first phase, you're still going back into those basic principles that we just talked about. Cool. And I imagine off, like we talked about in 15, essentially you're, you've got a, um, you've got even numbers and you're trying to create, you're trying to make the defense make a decision so that you get a, you get an overlap or you get an attacking advantage. So mm -hmm. I guess line out you've, and, and uh, scrum, you've got forwards, uh, three of them consolidated in one area of the field. So obviously for the backs, for the likes of yourself, you've got a lot more room to move and to manipulate that defense. Right, exactly, yep. And then uh, from your point of view, what are you looking to do? Is it, is it to get a one-on-one -on -one or to catch a defender? A little bit off guard of what exactly you sort of looking looking at doing um i think mo most of our strike plays are designed to kind of um get us into a, like a strong 2v1 position you know um unless we're doing it almost like a crash play we're trying to get the ball out into that center channel and then trying to get that center kind of to beat the other center. So then it's center and wing on just the opposition wing. So we're usually trying to set up kind of that 2v1 situation because we like our odds in that kind of situation against most teams. Fantastic, well explained. So you're trying to get outside that center, that wing yeah. bites in and then you put a 2v1. Nice. I mean, obviously we have plays that, you know, are to attack, you know, the space more inside, but I'd say most of the time we're looking for those outside channels, yeah. Perfect, nice, awesome. and. Uh, do you want to touch on restarts or should we save that one until after film? Uh, no, we can, I mean, we can save that one. Cool. Awesome. So now I'm going to stop uh, sharing my screen and then Chris, if you want to show a couple of attacking clips and we can talk through those briefly. Yep, definitely. Okay. I've never actually shared my screen before, so. Nice. First time. Um, I think you have to give me permission to do it. Okay, cool. Or, uh, make host. Sure. Right. <laughs> there, you do it. Uh, yeah, you're the host now. So you should be able to share your screen, I think. There we go. All right, there's my screen. Okay, here we are. All right, so I'm just going to run through a few attacking clips and just kind of talk through, you know, like um, what they're showcasing and like kind of why I picked them to kind of showcase what was going on here. Um, so this first one is just a kind of basic um, attack clip. Um, so we're just going to run through it. So you see here, we're starting from a breakdown. We're starting all the way on the five, on the, on the between the um, five and 15 meter channels on one side of the field. So, um, and you can already see this disconnect happening in the defense. See how you have some, uh, you have a group of them bunched around that ruck. And then you also have, you know, few of them shooting forward, one of them hanging back. So that's creating gaps in the defense. 
And so you can watch um, Abby here identify this gap, attack it at pace, and then you see the support play from Alev, a little bit of individual brilliance, and then she's taking off down the sideline. But then you have Lowe here, you know, she's, she's ready for that support. We get quick ruck and we're out again. And we're, now we're going sideline to sideline. We're filling that pitch, we're attacking at pace, um, and it ends in, um, you know, a pretty easy try for us, almost untouched. So um, that's just one example of attack, just, you know, identifying space, the support play, um, and really use filling the pitch and using the whole pitch to our advantage and kind of manipulating the defense in that way. Um, I guess that shows, Christy, just how little of an advantage you need to capitalize on. Like it was only just a slight defensive lapse and, and you right. guys have pounced on that and you've gone 80 meters. And, and the second part of that was the defense having to get back to the, to the offside line. Um, right. After say, 11 minute break. Yeah. They were screwed, weren't they? Yeah, a little bit. And, and so that's a big, that's, a, I mean, we try to play really fast and I think that that's, you know, for most teams in sevens, I think that that's kind of the game plan of like, if, you know, if you have your support there fast, you can make that a quick ruck. You can, you can catch the defense. If they're being lazy and not getting back, then that's just a huge advantage for you. So, um, yeah. Um, okay, so we'll go to the next one. Um, yeah. So this one, you got Naya on a break. Um, we got quick support there. Um, we got, if you can see, you got three defenders sitting right around that breakdown immediately. So you already have a situation where you're going to have numbers out wide. Because, um, so we move this ball quickly, and as you move across the field, you can see this huge gap between this one defender that's in front of our now ball carrier, and you can't even see the next defender in the screen. So that is a huge gap in the defense that we've created by having this breakaway and then moving the ball quickly. So you can see the identif identification of this gap. And then you can also see as the defense is then trying to cover it, that then the gap shifts. And you know, here you see low uh, understand the changing of that gap, cut back against the grain and easy try every time. Um, yeah. Nice. And then uh, this one is just gonna be an example of one of our kind of more pre-planned uh, strike plays. Um, just how, so this is coming off of scrum. Um, you can just see a little bit of the design of how we're trying to pull the defense apart before we actually are shifting the ball. Um, and yeah, so you can see here, Alev's coming back and then you, we have this, you know, these two players looping around, just trying to cause this indecision, get this defender to sit in front of Alev and get this next defender to also have to pay attention to the two players inside, then giving us space on the outside to be able to exploit. So then you got, we got Naya on the wing with 30 meters of space and we're gonna take that every time. Um, but so that's a strike play. Um, you know, we don't score off at first phase, but then you get in a situation where now we're just, okay, we're going back to our principles. We're gonna fill the pitch, we're gonna move the ball and you can already see these disconnects happening in the defense, this gap in the middle of the field, nice little 20 meters right there for us to be able to attack into. And we don't attack it in the perfect way you know, this defender makes a good play. They're putting pressure on the lev really early. But, you know, we got some a little bit of individual brilliance and still them trying to recover from that strike play. Um, and we're still ending it in a try. So, yeah. Nice. So it provides the platform, doesn't it, Christy, to capitalize on with your, with your principles, as you mentioned? Yes, exactly. Yep. Awesome. Well, very well explained. That, that was fantastic to to see those principles in real life. Yeah, so that's all I have for attack. So now, how do I get back to you? Stop share. Yeah, I think that'll work. Okay, I'm back to us there. Nicely done, and then if I go more, oh, you have to make me host, sorry. If you go more, make me, <laughs> we'll bounce back and forth. Where is that? Um, if you click on my name and more in the top like right corner and then make host. Make host, okay. Going back and forth here. There we go. Cool, awesome. So that, that's fantastic. Uh, attack, 
Um, there was really, really nice, concise summary of attack, and now we're heading into defense. So we've got three principles there again, just like we did for attack. And uh, Christy, hopefully you can shed some light on these ones as well. Yeah, so um, just kind of basic defense. Most commonly, you're going to have either this 6-1 or this 7-up type setup. And so a 6-1 um, is what we most commonly play. So that's six defenders in the line with a sweeper in behind. Um, but something we've seen a lot more in the last year of the series is teams switching to this 7-up setup. So they're, they're really applying heavier uh, pressure in that way. Um, it's not something that we do. Um, that often, unless we're, you know, defending within our own 22, and we don't really need a sweeper at that point. You're trying to apply max pressure, but it's something we've seen with a lot of other teams starting to play, especially against us, um, in that seven up setup. So they're really, you know, putting high pressure on us. Um, so those are just the basic kind of two setups. Um, I'll show you pictures of both in, um, when we go through some clips, but our basic like defensive ideas, the first one is connection. And, you know, we say connection over everything. And so, that's the connection that I was talking about earlier on um, when we we're talking about attack that we are trying to exploit in other teams is that lack of connection. So connection is really huge. And that's just, you know, with that comes with communication and, you know, the connection between defenders in line in, in the defensive line. And it's just really about, you know, you don't want to give the attack an easy read or an easy picture or showcase a very clear disconnect because that's, as I just showed, um, easy for the attack to exploit exploit. So that, that connection is just about, you know, making, maintaining the line, you know, attack, um, taking space at the same time, just kind of increasing your ability to then be able to control space, which is the next one. And I think this is important because, you know, you're on defense, but you don't want to just be reacting. You really want to be an active defense. Um, and so the way we control space is that often we're saying, okay, we don't want to get broken in the middle. It's a lot more stressful on defense to get broken through the middle because then you have to adjust on both sides. So what we're often trying to do is we're trying to control the space, force the attack to the outside channels. Um, because first of all, you get the, get the attack onto an edge, you get an extra defender in that sideline. And so we're always trying to play with that. Um, that's always helpful. Um, but also because if you can get them on the edge and then you can make an edge tackle, it gives more, your, your then defensive line has more time to readjust and then can apply more pressure the next phase. And then you're getting opportunities to shut them down two or three passes um, off a breakdown. So um, that's kind of how we try to control space. And that, but that is all, none of the controlling space is possible without maintaining that connection throughout. Um, yeah. Oh, nicely done. And with that, the seven, uh, seven up setup that you, you spoke about, mm -hmm. would that give teams a, an opportunity to kick? Is that what teams would be thinking to counteract that? Because if I had you on the wing, I'd be thinking, I'm just going to dink it in behind and you're going to do your thing yeah. down the yeah, sideline. Definitely. So I think, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we are, are not historically a team that kicks that much. So we've started to see a lot of teams go to the seven up setup against us because they're kind of betting that we're not going to kick. So it's, it's something that we're obviously trying to now implement into our game more and make more part of something we do in attack all the time. But it is effective against a team that, you know, you're kind of betting on won't kick because then you just get an extra person to be able to apply that pressure. Um, nice. Yeah. I guess the other downside of it would be that if you do make a little half line break, there's no protection, obviously. Right, exactly. And that's that's something that um, I'm going to kind of showcase when I show the setups. Because, um, you know, we are always in that 6-1 because we like having that comfort of having a sweeper in the background. So. Cool. Okay. All right. You're the host again. All right. Here we go. Okay. So um, running through defense. So first we just have, this is just kind of um, a clip that's going to showcase the picture of the 6-1, um, just so you can see kind of what it looks like. Um, so right here, um, you can see our sweeper in behind. She's about 15 meters off the line. Um, depending on the sweeper, you'll see them playing um, more shallow, more deep, just depending on, you know, their comfort and um, their ability to close space and what they're comfortable um, with in that. And so this is just our basic picture of a 6-1. Um, you, can, you can see the connection of the line. You can see everyone kind of moving together. 
trying to maintain so that there aren't easy reads. Um, and even with this, you know, we are trying to force wide, but but they cut back, but we have somebody who's ready to cover that immediately. Jordan is right there to help cover that, and we're fine after that. And you can still see right after that middle breakdown, which is something you don't really want to happen, is you still have this three-person connection on the outside ready to cover. Um, luckily, we got a penalty, but um, still we are ready to cover that immediately. Um, so that's just the basic picture of that 6-1, the 6 in the line with the one sweeper. Um, so next, um, just a clip showcasing more connection and just um, why it's so important. So here, Australia is going from a tap penalty. Um, so this is one of their strike plays. So they have a lot of moving pieces here. And so it's really important for us as a defense to maintain, to communicate throughout how they're switching and also just maintain that connection so that there aren't any easy reads and so that they're not making an easy break um, through the middle. Um, so you see these inlines, maintaining connection, not biting down, holding the space, trying to force them wide. We do get broken back in the middle, but then there, boom, we got a sweeper right in there to cause extra pressure, force them to make a mistake. So um, you can just see that connection and the use of our sweeper there where she's ready to come in and make that hit if we do get broken through the line. Um, and then here, um, we're just going to show a few... Uh, this is a little bit longer phases of defense and just you can so you can just kind of see you know how we adapt how we maintain this pressure and this connection as a line through multiple phases of defense so we're forcing the ball wide making the tackle out wide which then gives our our people on the inside the ability to get up off this line quickly um and so then they can apply more pressure they're they're you know they're ready to attack they're not on their heels which makes it harder to get broken um, and here we are forcing them wide again. Edge ruck, which is what we want, so that we can then apply max pressure off the breakdown. Do get broken through the middle through a little bit of a disconnect, but boom, there's our big sweeper, ready to make the hit, and then the rest of the line can then adjust right back off of that. And we're right back into the same type of phase play, forcing them wide, making the tackles out wide. And I guess you're saying to them there, Christy, like if you can get it wider, if you can get it wide outside of us, then good on you. But we don't think you can. <laughs> right, exactly. Pretty much. Yeah, we're, we're backing our, sp our speed out there. Also, you know, no one wants to be pushed into the sideline. So, you know, like forcing them that way really just puts them under a little bit more stress. Um, and then here we have, um, so we don't play seven up off, often. So here's a clip of Canada playing seven up against us. Um, so just so you can see, you know, they don't have a, their sweeper just got pulled in, just pulled into the line. And so now they're, they're at this point where they have seven people in the line. They're going to apply a lot of pressure on us. They're going to try to force us to make a mistake. And they're kind of backing the, backing the idea that we're not going to kick. Um, and that we're not going to break through the line. Um, so you can see as this goes, you know, they have people in the tackle, but they also have a lot of people on their feet, and they're, they're shooting off that line. They're ready to apply big pressure. They're shutting down our options, um, and they're just all over the – they're just ready to attack us, you know, all throughout the line. So that they're applying big pressure, and, you know, we are getting very close to making um, mistakes in this, and it does. It limits the gaps that you can see, you know. We get lucky there that ball goes backwards but you know often that's that's a knock on right there and so that that's kind of the idea of the seven up is just really increasing the pressure you can put on an attack um but you know the one problem with it is then if you do get broken um and we're lucky we have a lev but if you do get broken you do you don't make your tackle and then you got to break away um and you don't have the comfort of the sweeper there um but so though yeah so that's just kind of the seven up setup basic ideas behind it um and yeah nicely done that was fantastic it was nearly painstaking watching that clip you're like they were just like terriers all over you then finally you got a bit of room to spread the ball and that was all you needed right yeah so yeah and so a lot of teams have been playing seven up against us in the last year um, and you can definitely feel it uh, you just kind of feel a little bit suffocated until you get kind of that little bit of a break whether that's a you know, a missed tackle or just, you know, they are pressuring at different speeds and you can get in behind. But 
um, it's definitely, you know, it can be a very suffocating defense, but obviously um, without, you know, when you do get broken, then you're in, you're in big trouble, especially when you got to love running the ball through. So. Yeah. hundred percent. No, awesome. Thank you so much, Christy. That was incredibly informative. Um, thanks for the preparation that went into that and preparing the clips. Uh, what next for you? Are you heading down to are there plans to get back down to Trula or? Uh, yeah. So I'll be heading back in uh, two weeks. Um, and we're going to kind of start um, trying to find ways to uh, train in small groups while, until we can kind of open it up to bigger team training. So Nice. And when is the, uh, the recouped Olympic day? Uh, so it'll be the same time as it was this year. Next, So it'll be uh, end of July, beginning of August of next summer. So a little over a year from now. Fantastic. Nice. Well, all the best down in, in Trula. It's been a pleasure to have you on and um, we can't wait to, well, continue to have you involved with uh, what we're doing here at the Free Jacks. So thanks for the time taken to, to make this happen. Of course. Thanks. So happy to be here. Sweet. Cheers, Christy. Cheers.